Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another What Sold video. I am so excited that I am able to put out this next video. So it is, I guess, technically part of my death pile series, but um, I said starting January 1st, I was going to do a What Sold video every time I hit $500 in net sales, however long that took me. Now, my net sales are after platform fees, shipping, and my cost of goods. So. Uh, my, my first video that I already put out uh, took me 18 days and 24 sales to hit that 500. And hopefully the goal here is to close that gap and make it take less time, which this time it did take me 27 sales. So a few more sales, but less days, only 11 days versus 18. And some of these things are newly listed items from said death pile. So I am really happy with how things are going. It is baby steps. You guys have all been so encouraging. And uh, this week, I actually brought in more items than went out because I did make a trip to the bins. That video will come out next week uh, because I hit my goal. That is something that I'm doing if you're just now tuning in on this. Um, I'm not allowing myself to go thrifting, whether it's buy, sell, trade, or the bins, until I hit that next 500 and I only get to do one trip. So that is helping keep me in check and not bring in too much, but also not suck the joy out of reselling for me because let's be honest, sourcing is the most fun part. So let's just jump in and we're gonna chat about what sold over the last several days. Uh, this first sale we're going to talk about happened on January 20th. So that's when I started. We ended the last one. I was up to $506 in net profit. So I went a little bit over. All right. So the first thing to sell, uh, this was, let's see, this is a bundle sale on Kitizen. You are going to notice more Kitizen sales than usual because they had once a quarter, they, we do an event. We, as in just the sellers there, you sign up for at a grassroots event. We call it kid economy. So I do see an uptick in Kitizen sales, uh, during the time that that happens. And this was before, but I'm also listing more items over there to prepare for that. So a, this was a bundle sale of this pair of really beat up bogs, kids boots. This is where I learned my lesson of sourcing online, whether it's from ThreadUp or whatever, used shoes that don't show pictures of the bottoms. I paid $15 for these and the bottoms were shot. Um, then I sold also in the bundle, this pair of New Balance teal sneakers. These were my daughters and I actually sourced these off Poshmark for $9.94. She wore them and they, they still looked in excellent condition. Uh, so the two of those items I sold together for, let's see, $40. All right. The next thing um, was a Poshmark sale. And someone asked me today if I noticed that Poshmark, is it worth selling lower end items, the kids items, cheaper items? People do still buy cheaper items and are willing to pay the shipping fees. So I sold this Goodnight Prayers book. This was a free to me item. Often I have friends just give me things and say, hey, I was gonna go to Goodwill, take whatever you want to sell, donate the rest. So I love that. Um, and it sold for $8 on Poshmark. This was a fabulous sale. Um, I showed you guys when I purchased this, it was something I traded for at Once Upon a Child. I paid $10 for it. It was this adorable mini Bowden Fox pinafore. This is a brand that every now and then will just have super hard to find, highly sought after pieces. That's what HSA and HTF mean. It took me a long time to know that. But this sold for $67 on eBay of all places. And so that gave me uh, a profit, a net profit of $42 and 66 cents. And this was kind of an unassuming item, but I always look up particular items like this, especially any type of pinafore from Mini Bowden and was shocked at the comps on Mercari and eBay. So Always do your research because this is something that you could have easily listed for maybe $15 or $20 thinking it's just a kid's size, like 18 months, little thing. And yeah, so mini Bonin, that's a brand I'm always going to pick up. I sold, this is funny. Uh, so Michael and I have the McDonald's app. I know it's terrible for you. We don't go often, but another app you should get is Wawa. If you have those, they have a wonderful rewards program. Side note. Anyway, he had a an app 
reward that he could cash in for a free happy meal. So he, one day when he was out at work, he, he just pulled in and got himself a happy meal. He brought me home the toy. It was a Squishmallow. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can sell that. Sure enough, it sold super fast on Mercari for $6 and gave me $4.61. And it cost me absolutely nothing. So not all McDonald's toys are going to sell, but I had a feeling just being Squishmallow that it would. You're going to notice that out of these 27 sales, most of them are just kind of cheap, but they add up. This was a Bally Pink bra. It came in a thread up fun box uh, in October of 2022. So I had $3.41 into it and it finally sold for $10 on Poshmark. Hannah Anderson, another kid's brain you're always going to hear me talk about, especially the pajamas. This was a pair of ghost black pajamas. I had $4.75 into these from a trade I did at Once Upon a Child. When I say I get things at Once Upon a Child, I do record my cost of goods, but I never actually pay that. It's it's always with credits from taking stuff from Thread Up Kids Boxes, my own kid's closet, that sort of thing. These sold for $20 on Poshmark. These native Apollo mock sneakers, I did uh, average a cost of goods from a local, um, just hole in the wall kind of place at $6.50. They sold on Poshmark for $18. So not like the best flip, but I probably actually only paid like two or $3 and it helped lower my cost of goods for everything else. These were a great flip. I was, they, it took a little bit to sell. I did list these back in September of this past year. I picked up a pair of Harley Davidson boots at the bins. So at $1.80, I probably had about $5 into them because they were quite heavy and I was really hoping they would sell on Poshmark just because they were heavy. They did. So we're saying I had $5 into these boots. They sold for $44 and she left me the sweetest love note that she absolutely loved the boots. They showed wear from, if you have ever ridden a motorcycle, where you put your, your heels or like on the, the pegs on the motorcycle but that's gonna happen if you're gonna wear them for their purpose anyway. So was happy with that sale. Another item that was free to me, my stepmom gave me a whole bunch of stuff and I sold this pair of Adidas black slip-on sneakers. I had nothing into them, so I was happy to sell them for $12 on Poshmark. Now this was a good, very fast flip. I don't know if you guys have seen this before. Um, I went to, maybe not, I went to Plato's Closet to do a video to trade in more stuff from that 400 pound stuff that is, I still have never put out the video of what I got from the buy sell trade stores. I recovered all of my money from that initial purchase, spoiler. But I recently went, I did pay $15 for this Lululemon confetti. It was called like LA something, a pullover sweatshirt. But I really paid nothing because right, I swapped a whole bunch of junk from Thread Up for this and it sold within 24 hours for $48. So I was very happy with that. Sometimes I do list play condition items, which play clothes, like play condition in the kids world is like there are stains, there might be a hole, but if it's still a good brand like Lily Pulitzer, these were, they had stains, they had pilling, they had wear. Once upon a child won't even purchase items in this condition, but I do still list them sometimes. I bundled these two and sold them for $22. These were items that my girls both wore and had seen better days, but someone's gonna love them. This item uh, was an international sale on eBay. Uh, she didn't tell me what, but she said the shipping was outrageous for her, but it was this DKNY new with tags green dress. This did come out of my thread up 400 pounds, which I averaged my cost of goods in terms of what I would plan to list. That came out to $5 and seven cents. She paid $38 for this dress and that gave me $21 and 43 cents profit, net profit. That was great. All right, speaking of Lily Pulitzer, I also picked this up from that same Plato's trip. Uh, they had it priced at $15 for new with tags Lily, which was great. And it sold also on eBay, which look, I've been rolling in the eBay sales and y'all know that eBay is not, I don't list everything over there. I only have about 200 active listings right now. I think exactly 200 compared to my about 900 on my other platforms. I'm just now starting to cross list and I'm pretty particular about the condition of items that I cross list there. But anyway, this sold for $31. 
Sorry if I'm talking too fast today. I'm trying to just roll through these. I got to go turn in tax paperwork and... All right, the next, this was a Disney Parks Little Kids Spirit Jersey, which you all know if you've been to Disney, even the kids ones are $70 to $80. I picked this up at a local thrift store for $5, also sold on eBay for $41. Honey Love is a brand I did not know about, uh, but I got a bra in a fun box that had $5 into it. It sold, again, this is something that has in a death pile and I listed it and it sold within a day for $38. I believe this was a full price sale on Poshmark. I sold a pair of Dolce Vita furry slip-on sandals. These came out of a thread up shoe box that I opened on December 5th of 2022, $4.83 into them. I know that I did a 90 day update on that particular box. And so I know I was already in the profit. So they sold for $15. These super cute shoes. These are my daughter's. I picked them up originally from Once Upon a Child. So I had about $5 into them. She wore them with her Lily dresses when she wanted to go to school wearing Lily and still have school shoes on. They were a brand Salt and Seas. I'd never heard of it. They were essentially slip on no lace uh, Converse style shoes, but they had an anchor on them. So they were kind of nautical. And here they are. They sold for $15 on Kitizen. So not a huge sale, but these are the type of things where I say my kids, I dress my kids for free. Like I picked up these shoes, my kid wore them, and then I sold them for more than what I originally paid. Um, this one I walked away with $1.67 in profit, but I mean, my kid wore them. It was great. Like, so to me, that's, that's my goal when it comes to my kids' clothing. All right, this pair of Victoria's Secret pink cutoff denim shorts were mine from like, a really long time ago. And they sold on Mercari for $13. Another thread up shoe that I've had forever. And in fact, um, it's showing me a $0 cost of goods. This was one where I've had a thread up shoe box get lost for like three months and they ended up refunding me for the box. And then it finally showed up weeks later. And I got this pair of Max Studio Rivet Heels. They were very retro vintage looking pinup girl. I thought they were really cool, but they took a long time to sell. They sold for $16 and the buyer loved them. Another case where I had two of my little girls nightgowns that they outgrew. They showed a ton of pilling and wash wear. Once upon a child didn't want them because they were a little bit too warm, but there was still nothing wrong with them. They're that flannel material that really starts to show wear. Here they are. It was a bundle of two. They sold for $9 on Mercari plus shipping. So it gave me a profit of $5 and 14 cents. Again, knowing myself, I picked these up at a local thrift store for cheap and both of my daughters wore them and I still made five bucks. So don't be afraid to list your kids used or play condition items, especially in bundles. People want them for daycare, for grandma's house. They will still sell uh, a random item. It was a vintage antique ice cream scoop. I had to Google what it was, didn't know. Uh, I have been trying to give this thing away and I woke up one day and it sold for full price on eBay of $33. So that's fantastic. I made pure profit $23 and one cent. I don't offer free shipping anywhere in case you're wondering. I finally sold this beach bunny bikini bottom. I picked up several pieces from the real real on April 1st of 2023 uh, because I sent them items. They gave me an extra hundred dollars. I thought it was going to be a hundred dollars cash, but I got a hundred dollars store real, real credit to spend. And so I searched only their 70, 80% off sale. I had three whole dollars into this new tags bikini bottom sold for $41 on eBay. All right. I had uh, another couple sales on Kittizen. I sold this pair of North Face green athletic leggings. You guys, I'm pretty certain this was one of the oldest things in my inventory. I have had these listed since September 28th of 2021. This was around the time I started picking up more women's items to sell instead of old. when I got back into the reselling game, it was just kids items. I'm like, Oh, North Face. That's a great brand. It's really not. Uh, so these hung around. I paid $4.19 for them, but they finally did sell for $16.85 on Kittizen. The next sale also happened on Kittizen. It was this pair of Keens, which I do not think that the women's and men's 
Keens like this style sell for as good as the kids, but I have no trouble moving the kids ones from little sizes. This was a big kid size five. They sold for $30, but even with recording that crazy cost of goods, I still made a profit. So 30 bucks on kids. The next two sales were fantastic. These sold within two days of listing. I'm not somebody that goes to Marshalls and Ross a lot to buy items to resell, but right before Christmas, we happened to be in Marshalls buying Christmas gifts for people. And I looked through the kids and I was like, wait, I know this brand, the Simple Folk. This is a small shop. You've probably never heard of it unless you're into kids clothes or on Kittizen. This is very much a mom and pop, very niche uh, people that are into these type like Riley and crew, uh, mini Rodini, just very small. Uh, it's expensive, but they're usually they are from another country. They are organic and fair trade and all of that. Anyway, I picked up three pieces. Uh, the first to sell was this dress. Uh, I had $8 into the dresses and $6 into a pair of leggings. Um, this dress sold on eBay for $43. And the next one was the leggings I picked up. They sold on Kittizen for $22. And that $22 sale, I made $8.94 of net profit, pushed my net profit to $1,008.55. So $8 over my next goal of hitting uh, $500. And again, it took me 11 days and 27 total sales. So a couple decent sales in there, you know, obviously everybody would like 25 to $30 minimum sales, but that's not my business model. And that's especially when I'm also always selling. I have three kids. I'm always cleaning out their closets. So we are already several more sales now on the way to the next 500. Hopefully you guys appreciate the way that I'm doing these videos uh, versus, well, I really wasn't doing them consistently. So, uh, yeah, I am back to work, uh, listing items. My next video, I did get to go for this 500 sales that you just saw. My treat to myself was taking a day trip to the bins and, uh, yeah, so now I don't get to go thrifting again until the next one. So I've got a lot of listing to do and I think I'm going to film uh, cleaning shoes and listing some shoes for you uh, because that's something else on my agenda. I've got a box that I need to process. So thank you guys so much for watching, for all of the support, and I am cheering you on if you are on a death pile journey yourself. All right, set you a little goal and let's get to work. Have a great day, guys.